chat. Andy Fleece is a student working on the Masi Mara in Kenya. The hyena went down in about four and a half minutes, which is a pretty good standard time. We actually darted an adult male hyena. We gave him about two cc's of a drug called telozol, and after about five minutes, he goes down. He's just one of the students working with legendary hyena researcher Kay Holcamp. First thing we do is take blood of, uh, in various types of tubes treated with different an anticoagulants. We then uh, take a number of measurements of the teeth, of the body, uh, then we're collecting samples. Probably some of what he just ate still in here. We learn a lot, actually. Uh, we learn what the hormone levels are in the blood. We extract DNA so we can study gene flow across the entire ecosystem and, in fact, across big chunks of Africa. This is a rare experience for anyone, let alone a student. Because this is one of the very few projects around the United States where uh, graduate students and even undergraduates can potentially have opportunities to come to Africa and work on a large mammal, uh, I'm a pretty popular person, so I get a lot of applicants to, to join my lab, both uh, undergrads and graduate students. Go forward from there because it's easier to get a more accurate okay. Steph Dawes was a high school senior when she found out about Professor Holcamp. I learned about the hyena project on my own and ended up going and visiting her, meeting with her while I was there um, during the fall of my senior year, and she essentially handed me a huge stack of papers and said, read these, and so I read them all. And then coming to MSU, I actually started as a freshman working for her. And so that whole experience sort of actually being supported by a professor. As a senior in high school, when you're not working in their lab, and she's clearly very high profile, um, was really great. And then learning about the spotted hyena, they're an amazing species. So a few of the reasons I was really interested in them, they're a female dominated hierarchy. How rare is that and how cool is that? And then they are also what I sort of term an indicator species. So you can actually see how the entire ecosystem is doing based on how they change their behaviors. And especially with sort of all of the global climate change and um, especially in Kenya with the droughts and um, things like that, you can really learn a lot from the hyenas. Uh, we actually, from the serum in the blood, we can actually assess what diseases the animal's been exposed to and what antibodies have been developed. We learn a lot about their ectoparasites. Uh, we're clearly going to be learning a lot about their the bacterial cells that live on their bodies. And uh, we've learned a great deal about, uh, from these body size measurements and the tooth measurements, we know an awful lot about uh, how to age the individuals, how their um, bodies and skulls and teeth mature, a lot of, a lot of different things. The hyena suffers from some very bad PR. It's something student Kenna Lehman hopes to help change. Nobody who knows enough about them likes hyenas, unfortunately. But usually once you start a conversation with somebody and explain to them all the things that they think they know about hyenas and how most of those are wrong, they end up thinking, going away from it with, oh my gosh, hyenas are really cool. I, I'm really excited to watch them some more, which is really exciting. I think historically people have um, assume that these creatures are awful, lowly, nasty, skulking carrion eaters, and uh, they have a very bad reputation in art, in literature, going back to the ancient Greeks, uh, right up through Ernest Hemingway and Walt Disney and The Lion King, and uh, it's a reputation that's just not deserved because they're actually, I think, the most interesting animals out here. For the students, the hope is that this experience leads to their future. It's sort of a springboard, right, because you start off with this undergraduate research, then you have the ability to apply what you're learning in your science classes or in your classes to something that's real. Um, and then once you have that springboard, then it's like, well, where else can I apply what's real? And that's what brings you um, to Kenya or to any other country. And that, they hope, leads to a career in science and a life in places, well, places like this. For Kay, this life goes on and the learning never ends. I think one of the most wonderful things about it is that they teach me things, and I've learned so much.